used to be a time when you could spend $100,000 or more for even a minimal video production system. Nowadays, all you do is run down to your neighborhood electronic store like this good guys in California, buy yourself an edit controller, a couple 8mm video decks, some video software for your personal computer, and faster than you can say dissolve, you are in the desktop video business. Remember what computers did to publishing? Well, the same thing is happening with video. Today, we take a look at desktop video on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you that software piracy is a federal offense. When a few people steal software, everyone loses. Additional funding is provided by CompuServe, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, by Byte Magazine and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Schiffe, and with me this week is Jan Lewis. Jan, this is Direct Ed Plus from Videonics. It's a brand new thing that just came out. You plug your camcorder in here, you plug your VCR in, it turns them both into a very sophisticated editing system. Here's the controller, built-in character generator, special effects and so on, quite amazing. Look at this camera, an 8mm camera. Can we bring camera one in here for a second, by the way? Look at what's happened to video cameras. That's what we <laughs> use in the studio. This is what you can do right now. This isn't quite the quality, but it happens to have a built-in VCR, which that big camera doesn't have. HyperPress just came out with Big Time TV, lets you bring video into your Macintosh screen. This desktop video stuff is exploding all over the place. Are these just toys, or are there business applications out there for them? Well, I think they're sort of both. They're great toys because they're fun to play with, yeah. but there are serious business applications in much the same way that word processing is serious. These kinds of tools give you the ability to experiment, try things out, cut and paste, do things your own way, mm -hmm. uh, and more and more in business, it's going to be important to be able to produce videos as a lot of the things that were on the printed page are replaced by video. Yeah. You're yeah. going to have to produce these yeah. things yourself. Jan, today we'll look at the latest desktop video products for the three major platforms. We'll see the new multimedia authoring system for the Commodore Amiga, the newest software from Macromind for the Macintosh, and DVA, Digital Video Architecture from Videologic for the IBM Compatible World. Now, desktop video is not only for business applications, it's also helping serious scientists do their research. And we begin with a visit to the Imaging Technology Group at NASA's Ames Research Lab. NASA Ames Research Center in Mountain View, California, is the birthplace of some of the space agency's most formidable accomplishments. The planetary probes Pioneer Venus and Pioneer 10, the first to leave the solar system, got their start at Ames. Ames is also the home of the largest wind tunnel in the world, and a supercomputer center where future aircraft flights can be simulated in real time. At the AIM Center's Imaging Technology branch, computer-based desktop video has been added to the traditional tools of still photography and film to help scientists explain and demonstrate their research projects. They come to us with a visual problem, and sometimes that might be a way of encoding data, uh, might be a way of uh, helping them present their data, and uh, sometimes it may be communicating an idea at a conference or a seminar or some type of presentation. The center's desktop video system is based around a Macintosh 2X with 8 megabytes of RAM. An image capture card, a digitizer, and a software package called Midas complete the system. Midas is a multi-purpose program that functions like a video image database, storing digitized excerpts from the videotape. It also automates the editing process by marking edit points and storing strings of edited pictures. One of the group's recent tasks involved a study of tadpoles raised in zero gravity. To help researchers identify aberrations in the animal's development, the center's technicians videotaped a tadpole swimming. Then, merging computers and videotape, they traced its wiggling contours frame by frame on the Macintosh. One machine in our imaging lab now does everything from desktop editing to digitizing to scripting to storyboarding to word processing and uh, it's, it's just very, very versatile and that's the real, that's the real strong point of it.
Joining us in the studio now is Ken Christie, manager of multimedia marketing for Commodore. Jen? Ken, the uh, Amiga has been out for over four years now and has been known for being a good video computer. Tell me what it is about it that makes it a good video computer. Well, the most basic feature that makes it a good video computer is the signals coming out of the Amiga are compatible with the standard broadcast signals. So it's very easy to have video compatibility. The signal that comes out can be hooked up to a projector or any other device just with a simple cable. What did you just do now, Ken? What we're running here is a, a segment off of a video disc and we brought in some graphics coming off of the Amiga uh, computer itself and this was created with an authoring system that we are now also offering to developers and will be out shortly as a product. All right, now can you go back and now show us how you create something like that where you're combining video and Amiga graphics? Certainly. This is the screen that was just a graphic and I'll come out to the authoring system itself. This is Amiga Vision and what you see here, this is the Amiga features menu that we were just showing and if I scroll down here, this is basically an icon based flowchart metaphor flow, uh, mm -hmm. system. So we come down here and look at the video compatibility. Mm -hmm. We launch a video disc segment mm -hmm. and here we just happen to be playing from this frame to this frame and then we take the video compatibility title which we've called out of one of our directories off of our hard disk and we can preview that and take a look at it separately if we'd like just to make sure that yes it is a real graphic there it is mm -hmm. come back to the authoring system and then we're waiting for a mouse input in this case any click to come back and go mm -hmm. on to the next sequence and the way this works is there's just a whole series of audio video icons there are weight icons like the mouse input and you simply drag these up into your flowchart in order to create your presentation. Well, this is a really easy authoring system. This is sort of like an outline processor, but for doing uh, desktop video. Basically, you're taking groups of icons, and that creates chunks of code that can run a linear presentation or an interactive application. Mm -hmm. For example, let's say we wanted to take advantage of the multitasking aspects of the computer. We can come down here and look a little further in the flowchart, and what we have is essentially where we've taken a video disc segment again, and this time we have the same screen coming up, mm -hmm. only now we'll also launch a music file out of the Amiga CPU, mm -hmm. and then we'll also launch an animation file running at the same time. Mm -hmm. And now if we scroll back up here a little bit and launch it straight from the features menu again, we can show the full multitasking aspects of the computer. Mm -hmm. So these are going to be all four of those different uh, media. Right. You have the video disc segment first. Uh -huh. okay. The music the file music. comes in. An overscan window will come up here shortly. And then an animation playing on top of it. This is addressing uh -huh. all the outside edges of the screen. Uh -huh. And then a real-time animation, animation all playing simultaneously. Nice. All right, let me ask you about this, this product. It's Amiga Vision, this, mm -hmm. this multimedia authoring system. Right. What's the status of it? Is it a product that I can buy? Uh, it's available to developers right now. Uh, we'll be announcing it as an available product shortly uh, in the next couple months. And uh, also there'll be a standalone price. And the final decision hasn't been made yet, but mm -hmm. it'll likely be uh, bundled with all of our uh, 2000 and up CPUs. Uh -huh. Now, 2000 and up, does it take a 2000 and up to run this? No, it doesn't. The authoring system only takes up a half a megabyte of, of space so that you can actually run it on the Amiga 500. One of the important points uh, we feel that it's very uh, useful for us is you can have a delivery station that can cost, say, $1,500 to $2,500 by using the Amiga 500 as your delivery mm -hmm. platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, as Jan mentioned at the beginning, the Amiga has always been sort of the video machine, but you've got the Mac and the PC guys now mm -hmm. coming in. Are, mm -hmm. are, are you worried about the competition now in this video world? Not <laughs> given our overall price performance, no. We have a very good uh, foothold in the professional video market for graphics and animation, uh, professional music market as well, and to us that's all multimedia mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So as we take this into uh, CB computer-based training and other interactive video applications, we think we'll do just fine. And the main thing is the price is better than the other machines for the same capabilities, is that Absolutely. the idea? Absolutely. Or in some cases more capabilities. <laughs> <laughs> and looking at the the authoring system there, it sort of has a kind of hypercardy feel, <laughs> point and click on the icons. Is that sort of the, the approach? Uh, it's more than just a database uh, accessing device. It's a full-blown authoring system. It has database features. You can launch DBase files from it, create forms. Uh -huh. uh, it's very full-featured in terms of what it can do. All right, Ken, thank you very much. In just a minute, we'll take a look at desktop video on the Macintosh with the latest from MacroMind. Stay with us.
Joining us now is David Kleinberg, Marketing Director for Macromind. Jan? Dave, in the uh, previous segment, we saw the Commodore Amiga doing um, some desktop video stuff. Now, Macromind deliberately chose the Macintosh as the platform. Tell us why. Well, the Macintosh is a great computer because it incorporates video as well as sound and it has an open architecture to support 32-bit color and has a lot of facilities for a multimedia platform. And uh, Macromind Director had a lot of success because it can incorporate sound, graphics, animation, text, as well as video. We extended that capability in our new product, Macromind Director 2.0. Now, 2.0 has seen a lot of use already in presentations and business promotions and business learning. I've got a neat little example here. Yeah, show us the examples of 2.0. Of, uh, uh, Club Med, in order to uh, attract people to their new Club Med One ship, had a little information kiosk where people could go up and click on about a boat mm -hmm. and find out all the benefits of their uh, their vacation. Mm -hmm. They were going to have mm -hmm. little margins. Where, where's yeah. that video coming from? Dave? Well, this video was actually captured and then stored on disc, so it's really nice. It's okay, so this is digitized video. This is off digitized the hard drive. video off the hard drive, and they could capture customer information like their credit card number and account. Uh, at the time that they're creating excitement of the um, actual uh, vacation itself. I've got uh, another example here of, uh, of a fictitious company, if you will, that can also use the same type of integration of text, sound, graphics, and audio. This time we're going to use live video as a way to attract our audience and also offer more information that we could using static I noticed pictures. you're using a, a video tape rather than the video disc. Yeah, this is a new breakthrough in technology. We support interactivity and the control of external devices in Director 2.0 and you hear the sound here, the sound could come from a CD, but we've got a little video 8 player that's showing us uh, when we're interested, a little video tour and I can click on a button and start the video playing and we can find out more information about our potential travel or services or any type of uh, information we want. Okay, the video is coming from the 8 millimeter deck the, the animation is coming from the Macromind Mac. director mm -hmm. from the Macintosh, and I can pause, I can fast forward, I can search, and I can retrieve uh, different frames. And it's really wonderful because now I have the power to go out with a camcorder and film my factory or dealer or reseller, mm -hmm. now incorporate that into a presentation. So you don't need a laser disc player like we usually see in these setups. You well, can use this deck. Well, we support both, but I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are going to find that this is a really compelling way to, to include video. Can you, can you take us inside uh, Director 2.0 now and show us how you'd actually be creating these things? Sure. We've got uh, the uh, really breakthrough technology in terms of being able to control all the elements of multimedia quite easily with a timeline notation that lets you create and uh, combine animations. Mm -hmm. What I'll show you really quickly is how easy it is to um, bring in, I've already imported here a graphic of the Apple uh, logo and if I just step forward, uh, and move the apple to the right in each frame. I've got a little frame counter here. Mm -hmm. And this is essentially how animation works within Macromind Director. You just uh, move things one frame over at a time. This and is easier to do it, isn't it? It's quite easy to do. What, what we have is the score metaphor, which allows us to uh, easily uh, animate things automatically. And once we've brought uh, an object in, we can then bring in other objects in successive frames, like here's a really nice photograph of the Macintosh. And I can create, by adding um, interactivity, I can create a little loop that has my uh, apple in a loop here. And it's waiting for me to create a button that will take me to that sequence where the Macintosh appears. And I've got a full host of button tools that I can use. So I can create a button and uh, create a script for that button to take me to the Macintosh. So I just created a button called the Macintosh. And as in HyperCard, I have full control over the uh, text, sizes, and fonts. And by applying a script to the button, I can then go to the frame where the Macintosh would appear. That's what gets you out of the endless loop that you put yeah. it into, basically. Mm -hmm. okay. Dave, so, I want to interrupt. We have about a minute left, okay. and I want to make sure we see some of the output of your other product, yeah. Macromind 3D. We have a videotape of uh, some of that output. Now, if we could roll the tape, and you could give us a little play-by-play -play of what we see. Sure. This is Macromind 3D, a, a 3D animation and rendering tool. And it brings the power of 3D animation down to the uh, platform of the Macintosh. Normally, the wonderful animations you're seeing here would require about eighty to hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment. But with the Macintosh, you can uh, bring in models from other programs like Swivel 3D, uh, animate them, render them, add texture mappings. You can have multiple lights, multiple objects, multiple cameras, and uh, this is available as of May. And um, it's fourteen ninety-five, and it runs on uh, any Macintosh too. All right, that's terrific. Thank you very much, Director 2.0 and 3D, Macamine 3D. Are the new products. Right. Okay. Well, the Macintosh is being used in several high-end professional applications. One of them is the Avid editing system, and Wendy Woods has a report on that.
The San Francisco Production Group is the only West Coast facility that's got an avid media composer, a hot state-of-the-art desktop video system based around a Macintosh. This system revolutionizes what's called yeah. offline editing, which is where all the decisions about cuts and sequences are made before the real videotape is touched. The Avid allows you to work with a totally digital copy of the real videotape. 20 minutes of real-time video translates to about 600 megabytes of digital data stored on hard disk. This copy, which you can divide up into shots and scenes, is edited using the Macintosh's famous cut and paste procedures until a client gets the exact look that they desire. As a, as a client advantage, the best thing about the Avid is he is able to make decisions and, and, and be indecisive as, as clients usually are uh, without making a tremendous uh, waste of time out of the whole situation, keeping the editor happy. Uh, at the same time. This system isn't desktop video for the rest of us. The cost is between $50,000 and $80,000. But it is proving to be cost effective for this video post-production house. People here estimate the Avid system decreases offline editing time 50 to 70 percent. But most importantly, it seems to satisfy the clients. In San Francisco, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. With us now is Kirk Curtis, Vice President of Video Logic, and next to Kirk, Philip Robinson, contributing editor with Byte Magazine. Jan? Kirk, you're going to be showing us some really interesting uh, video things uh, using your digital video architecture. Uh, tell us what that is, that architecture. Well, digital video architecture is an architecture that we developed to allow people to actually have motion video on a computer screen. And this product, which is a DVA 4000 adapter, is one of the pieces of hardware that came out of DVA as an architecture. And what it actually allows you to do, uh, which I can show here, is to have full motion video on the screen along with standard VGA graphics. Uh, here I'm in Microsoft Windows. I have two different windows coming up from a video disc player. And as with any other object in a Windows environment, I can move these around. I can actually size them, make them larger or smaller. And they're coming up proportional to the size of the, uh, of the window. Yes, exactly. And I can even make one of these go to a full screen or even drop it down to an icon so that you have a full motion digital video icon here. And could you have in Windows mm -hmm. another non-video application running in a window also? Absolutely. You can run uh, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft mm -hmm. Word, mm -hmm. any uh, application that ran under Windows, or we could quite literally be doing this from DOS. It doesn't uh -huh. require Windows uh -huh. or Presentation Manager. The video processing is basically bypassing the, uh, is doing it on the board rather than through the uh, CPU of the machine itself. So consequently, you can really run anything in the background. Yes. While these are going. That's right. Part of the architecture was to remove the processing and memory requirements from the host and put it onto the adapter itself. So it doesn't matter whether you've got a 286 or a 386. Yeah. And I see as you reduce uh, the Windows application here to an icon, I mean, we still see the video actually in the icon down that's there right. when you minimize it. Yeah, that's due to the interpolation, line filtering, some of the techniques that we mm -hmm. use on video. All right, I know you have another application you want to show us in which you, you really would have a practical use of this, and I want to ask you to set that up. And while you're doing that, Philip, if we can turn to you. What we're seeing here is a hardware approach to desktop video, not just a software approach. What's the significance of that? It's very significant because any approach to desktop video, the hardware is extremely important. The so hardware that we have so far, even 386s or 486s, just isn't fast enough to store or manipulate the information. Video images are huge. Mm -hmm. And without special chips, and this is a good example of a chipset, you just can't make the images small enough to get them through the bus on the machine, to put them on the screen, to manipulate them and, and change the image size. Mm -hmm. There's no way to do it. In and you've got to do that 30 times a second to get Well, sure. A, a, a single image from full screen, full motion video right. would be 700K. Yeah. 30 times a second, you're talking megabytes per second. Mm. just can't do it without special chips. Kirk, you have your next uh, application up here. Yes, what we've got here is an example where a financial analyst might say want to have an online session with CompuServe where you're able to pull up real-time information off of that. At the same time as you might want to recalculate a spreadsheet down here, I have a spreadsheet with a graph and I can put numbers in here and uh, use Excel. That's not slowing down the video at all, is it? 
No, actually, the beauty of this is that now I can have uh, real-time video, not something that's coming off of tape, mm -hmm. and I can take news that might affect the financial information that I'm tracking, and I can drop it right into my decision-making. Again, to be clear, you're not, we're not watching the laser disc now. You're watching live broadcast TV, theoretically, anyhow, on the screen, while you're live on CompuServe looking at stock quotes, exactly. while you're playing around with that information in your, in your Excel spreadsheet. Yes, and this television here could be CNN, FNN, mm -hmm. CNBC, mm -hmm. McNeil Air. Right. Now, the reason that this isn't slowing down while you're doing other things, is that because the processing itself is being done entirely on the, um, on the board? Yes. One of the d design considerations uh, when we developed the digital video architecture was to not have any of the processing or memory requirements on the host, but actually on the adapter itself. Philip, we've seen three different platforms now for desktop video in this program, the Commodore Amiga, the Macintosh, and now the PS2, the IBM world. Uh, how do you sort of compare these three in terms of future platforms for desktop video? Well, I think none of the three is there yet. The Amiga had the biggest head start when it came out. It already had some ability to work with video. It's fallen a little bit behind because it hasn't kept up with the number of colors you need and some other display mm -hmm. characteristics, but it's still one of the best. The Mac is probably in second place because it had lots of memory. It could, could deal more easily with more memory than the PC could, but the There's PC... There's more of them out there, too. A lot more than Amigas, but many fewer than PCs. Yeah. And the PC has that open architecture. It's not built for video, but if you add affordable well, you a, hardware, you that board, yeah. Yeah, then so you start uh, making it a pretty good video platform. Mm -hmm. So who's going to win the competition? I don't know, but uh, the PC is such a great market. That Kirk, is that why you were designed for the PC and the PS2? Yes, the digital video architecture is platform independent as an architecture, but we came out first on microchannel, then for PC XT80. Or is this a product I can buy now? Yes, you can buy it right now today. At what price? $24.95. And what do you see is the market for this? Uh, I think the main market is training, corporate presentations, and real-time information systems. All right, Kirk Phillip, thank you very much. Thanks. That's our look at desktop video. We'll be back in just a minute with this week's computer news. In the random access file this week, Apple Computer has finally extended its hardware warranty to one year. Previously, Apple warranties were only good for 90 days and only valid in the U.S. The new warranty will be honored by any authorized Apple reseller in the world. The new warranty is in effect for all Apple hardware sold after January 1st of this year. And Apple is offering a special deal for old customers, a one-year Apple Care contract for the price of six months. That offers good through the end of March. If you have questions about new software you've purchased, don't delay in getting them answered. An industry survey indicates that more and more software companies are charging for customer support with annual fees ranging from $100 to $600, but in most cases, free support is available for the first 90 days. Tandy has cut the price of its T1000HX to just $299. It comes with Personal Deskmate 2, an integrated software package. Compaq has added a new Desk Pro to its line of business computers. The Desk Pro 386-25E runs at 25 megahertz, and it's supposed to be 50% faster than 20 megahertz non-cash machines. Prices start at $6,500. This week, a Macintosh user says he's having trouble with his mouse. The on-screen pointer is not responding properly. Does that mean the mouse is dying? With the answer, here's Dr. John Heilborn. Although your mouse could be dying, there's two things that are much more common that cause that kind of problem. First of all, you may be using your mouse on too slick a surface, like a glass table or a metal table. And if that's the case, you'll want to get something like a pad of some sort to use instead of the table directly. But the most common cause for this kind of problem is simply a dirty mouse. The way that you'd check this out and correct the problem is to take out the ball that's inside the bottom of the mouse and take a look at the rollers that are in there. If those rollers are dirty, get a cotton swab with some alcohol and simply clean them off like this. Then once you're done, put the mouse ball back in the bottom, close it up, and you'll be back in business. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Dr. John. Pacific Data Products is offering a new PostScript emulation cartridge for HP's LaserJet printers. Like Hewlett Packard's own PostScript cartridge, the Pacific Page cartridge comes with 35 fonts. It also supports Adobe Type 1 fonts. The cartridges start at $500. This week, we take a look at the top selling software programs for the Mac, according to Mac Connection. Macintax still leads the list, followed by Adobe Type Manager, Symantec's antivirus application called SAM, Grammatic, and Quicken. Also in the top 10 this week, 
Some too, Symantec's utilities for Mac, Type Align for ATM, Microsoft Word, Delta Graph by Delta Point, and Berkeley Systems After Dark. It may be the fastest optical character recognition in the West. Care Corporation says its new parallel reader can process and recognize characters at a top speed of 2,500 words per minute. The secret to the parallel reader's speed is four additional processor boards, which all work on different pages at the same time. This $11,000 system requires a scanner and is targeted for heavy-duty OCR work. Duquesne Network Integration says it plans to introduce a new LAN that combines data, voice, and video. The multiple signals will be sent across a single twisted pair cable, which the company hopes will replace separate cables for computers, phones, and video signals. TriLAN, as it's called, will be available late this year. It's a computer affair for Fox Television. It seems a former Fox employee may have been tapping into some sensitive computer data files for the Fox program A Current Affair. Secret Service agents and Los Angeles police recently arrested freelance writer Stuart Goldman in California after they matched Goldman's outgoing calls with incoming calls at Fox's New York office. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Kate McGargy. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, which offers online information related to today's subject. Members type Go Chronicles. Non-members call for more information. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, by Byte Magazine and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.